to the premise webinar where Marie Thiessen will be introducing an NHMRC Centre of Research Excellence in the Prevention and Early Intervention of Mental Illness and Substance Use. Marie is presenting this live at the Alliance for the Prevention of Mental Disorders Conference, which we're currently holding in Noosa right now. And we also have um, our online viewers, so welcome to you who are online as well. Marie Thiessen is an NHMRC Principal Research Fellow and Director of the NHMRC Centre of Research Excellence in Prevention and Early Intervention in Mental Health and Substance Use. She is a Fellow of the Australian Academy of Health and Medical Sciences and National Mental Health Commissioner and a ministerially appointed member of the Council of the NHMRC. Marie has made a substantial contribution to the mental health field and in the last five years she has been awarded the Australian Museum Eureka Prize for mentoring young researchers, the Senior Scientist Award by the Australasian Professional Society on Alcohol and Other Drugs, the Westpac and Australian Financial Review 100 Women of Influence Award and the Society for Mental Health Research Oration and Founders Medal. In 2018 she was made a Companion of the Order of Australia, Australia's highest honour. Welcome, Marie. Thank you very much. Oh, I think I'm wired. Thank you. And it is a great pleasure to be here today to be launching Premise. Um, thank you very much for that introduction, Nikki. The Premise uh, Centre of Research Excellence in um, uh, prevention and early intervention of mental illness and substance use is uh, a large collaboration focused on, and I'll just make the Yay! is uh, focused on the burden of mental and substance use disorders. Now the burden of mental and substance use disorders now account for one in every 10 lost years of health globally. In any other area of health this would be a global catastrophe but we do not pay enough attention to the issues around mental health and drug and alcohol and this burden clearly falls heavily on the young. So Five out of 10 of the leading causes of burden of disease in people aged 10 to 24 are mental health and drug and alcohol issues. And this conservatively costs the Australian community $40 billion annually. How many young people are we talking about when we talk about these levels of um, issues within the Australian community? Well, 21% of men and males and 26% of females. So that in any one year, 670,000 young Australians will meet criteria for a mental disorder or substance use disorder. And the experience of co-occurring problems is common. So it's not just that people have one, frequently people have one disorder, they have frequently have many disorders. So one in five young people with a mental disorder or substance use disorder will have more than one. And for women that's close to a third and for males 17%. So mental disorders and substance use disorders frequently co-occur, they share common risk factors and they interact. And these disorders, not only the burden falls on young, that is young people, that's also the time when the disorders begin. So the first time that people with anxiety disorders will discuss having symptoms is when they're 15. For mood disorders, 24. For substance use disorders, 19. Half of the people in our community who will have mental or substance use disorders, those disorders will have begun before the age of um, 15. For 75%, it's before the age of 25. So critical period is clearly adolescence and early adulthood. And it's not only um, that people will experience these disorders young, it's that it takes a long time for people to actually seek help. So this is data from 10,000 Australians and we asked when was the first time you had symptoms of alcohol abuse or alcohol dependence and then for the 34% of people, only 34% who made to treatment anywhere in the lifetime, the eventual the, the delay, the medium delay, just for alcohol use disorders alone, to make treatment contact in Australia is 18 years. So that's 18 years of catch up if the first time 
that you actually see anyone, a general practitioner or anyone about your alcohol use disorder or your uh, mental health problem is um, 18 years after the um, first onset. And what treatment, and thank you to the Twitter sphere for providing this data to me. We had Twitter conversations before the um, webinar and uh, uh, David Christmas and others sent me this information. Um, a review showing that 62 to 92% of people with co-occurring disorders just wouldn't be included in clinical trials. They'd be excluded if they tried to enter a clinical trial because of the complexity of, of what they were experiencing. So we've got a lot to do. And it's also reflected in our suicide statistics. So most recent suicide statistics show that over 65,000 Australians made a suicide attempt in the last year, and that 3,128 Australians died by suicide in 2017. Suicide is the leading cause of death for Australians between 15 and 44 years of age and young Australians are more likely to take their own life than to die in a motor vehicle accident. So against those figures and that data that I've presented to you, it's almost hard to believe that Australian and that young Australians and young people want a better future but they absolutely do want a better future. And the re recent Mission Australia um, report asked over 24,000 young Australians what they think are the most important issues in the Australian community today. Didn't ask the politicians what they thought, didn't ask the parents, didn't ask the adults, ask the young people. And what are the top issues for them? Mental health, top issue. Second issue, drugs and alcohol, second issue. Third issue, equity and discrimination. So these are the three most important issues for young people in Australia today. And on the basis of this, um, we have brought together five uh, universities and six organisations to try and bridge the gap between what young people want and what is identified as a burden within young people, but where the evidence base and where the investment is in our community in this space, because there is a huge gap between those two things. So Premise is an NHMRC Centre of Research Excellence built on trying to align the work of uh, the five organisations and five Australian universities and the six organisations. So we're trying to provide a synergy of the leading intervention and early intervention research programs so that we don't keep working within silos, that we bring together researchers across addiction, depression, suicide, anxiety and psychosis together to share skills, networks, innovate, innovations and synergized data. And we want to try and establish new trials and translate that evidence into um, practice. It's a starting point. It brings together five groups and it aims really strongly to build large trials because in the prevention space, we need large trials and we need large investments to see the difference. So premise, is um, collaborators are the Black Dog Institute and Helen Christensen, who's here today, uh, Pat McGorry and the Origin Centre uh, for Youth Mental Health, Francis K. Lamkin, President of SMHR and University of Newcastle, Kathy Miolopoulos from Deakin University and expert in health economics, Andrew Bailey at the University of Sydney, and um, five researchers from the University of New South Wales, who on the 10th of December will actually be at the University of Sydney. So um, heading up a new centre called the Matilda Centre, but later for that. Um, so this is the prevention and early intervention group, um, focusing on epidemiology, prevention, uh, Nikki Newton, Kath Mills, um, the program director is uh, Associate Professor Kath Chapman, Tim Slade on epidemiology and uh, heading epidemiology. 
and in most importantly, a very strong focus on um, our youth advisory board and youth input into the whole um, activity. Our associate investigators, um, Associate Professor Alison um, Callier, um, who's in the audience, um, and Dr. Louise Thornton, who's also in the audience here today. And the expert advisory group is co-chaired by Leonie Manns, um, so that lived experience is central to the focus of the um, centre. And a big team of passionate researchers. So why premise, why now? Well, substance use disorders are the leading cause of burden of disease in young people globally. As I said, we have huge costs associated with those. We have prevention and early intervention that can change this. But Australia spends only 1.7% of its total health expenditure on prevention. That's not even talking about mental health and drug and alcohol prevention. That's total health expenditure. And that's less than two thirds of all OECD countries. So it's not, it's such a league table that we want to be winning. We don't want to be down on the bottom third of that league table. So premise is represents an opportunity for some cohesion to bring together some of the exciting research that's happening in mental health and substance use prevention to increase the evidence base um, for effective prevention and early intervention and to increase the scientific evidence for knowledge, causes and risks. And finally, to try and take that knowledge and that evidence base and disseminate it and implement it um, so that the science of prevention and early intervention can be placed into practice. It's central to the, um, to the architecture of um, premise to try and create better outcomes and at the core is our research knowledge and our research streams, stream A and stream B, and I'll talk a little bit next about what, we ha what research is happening in those groups. But taking that knowledge and translating it through implementation, online portals, cost effectiveness, knowledge exchange, dissemination, education and facilitation. And where the rubber hits the road with the premise will be new knowledge grants, postdoctoral fellowships and PhD scholarships, cross-institutional mentorship, the Youth Advisory Board, as I spoke about, e early and mid-career seed funding, and early and mid-career travel and career development funding. So watch out as those opportunities um, are made available. So the science. Critical, as I said, to premise is increasing the evidence base. And I take heart from um, Rosalind Franklin, who was a true discoverer of DNA, that science and everyday life cannot and should not be separated. And if we're going to be talking about science and changing the lives of young people, one of the critical uh, things that Premise needs to pay attention to is that Australian teenagers and teenagers around the world live in a digital space. So. 69% of teenagers will have a mobile phone. 74% will use a desktop or a laptop or a computer. So whatever we build in terms of the evidence base has to take into account the fact that young people live within a digital world. And talking about some of the most exciting science that we have available to us and where I actually think some of the awesome discoveries in prevention are going to happen. This is a dynamic model of um, a friendship network. The red dots are those kids who are drinking and the um, grey dots are the kids who are not drinking. And over time we can see that if you were to list up to six friends who are in your year at school who spend the most amount of time, you must spend the most amount of time with, we can dynamically model over time both the influences of those who have alcohol problems and then how they influence others. But being able to collect large data and understanding um, contemporary friendship networks and contemporary data um, is going to be crucial for us unpacking these issues in terms of prevention. So in terms of knowledge and causes, this is, a, this is particularly um, an area of exciting research. 
that prevention, as I mentioned, can't happen in just small samples. It needs to happen in large samples. In Australia, we have and are collecting some of the largest samples over the course of adolescence of young people. We need to bring those together, harmonise them, so we can understand where the opportunities are for prevention are. So, for example, bringing together the um, two studies here, which were conducted over the last six to seven years, but doing follow-ups so that we can understand over critical life events which kids or which young people become the stars of which young people unfortunately fall into the black holes. So bringing together the 22 or the 6,000 or the 20,000 students and then following them over the course, over the life course. In terms of new directions, we have some of the most innovative research in anywhere in the world in Australia. We've got online programs happening for drug prevention for parents and students computerised interventions for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and uh, students, secondary students, and taking in multiple health behaviour change. So within premise, there will be these um, innovations in terms of new directions for interventions. Um, and uh, an exciting uh, new piece of work, um, and one of the winners of uh, one of the awardees of some of the most recent uh, funding is um, uh, from Black Dog Institute, and um, and that is built around the Sleep Ninja. So again, taking new directions and innovative, in, innovative in prevention approaches based on CBT, deli delivered in collaboration with young people, but building fully automatic chat box to re chat bots to reinforce um, text messaging um, through the Sleep Ninja. The exciting work of Yale Perry. Oh, Lisa, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. I can't take that back now either, can I? <laughs> Aliza, thank you. <laughs> you all do exciting work. Um, anxiety and uh, alcohol use with running a randomised control trial of an online early intervention for anxiety and problematic uh, alcohol use among young Australians, the Inroads program. Uh, Intervention around trauma and substance use among adolescents. So this is the very first randomised control trial of an integrated treatment for co-occurring PTSD and substance use among adolescents. And not only running, as I said, not only running uh, treatment trials and new interventions, but also disseminating and translating that into, um, into uh, practice. So the Positive Choices Portal, for example, reaching over one million page views, um, disseminating evidence-based information, and the Black Dog uh, Digital Dog, uh, also reaching millions of Australians and disseminating that um, evidence base and translation. Critical um, and innovative for the future is also our links with uh, Deacon and Kathy Mealopoulos and Mary Lou Chatterton aiming to increase our information around public policy and practice or increase our capacity in public policy and practice to uh, in a, to the addition of economic analyses and components to our existing studies. And there's a lot of many, many challenges in doing this in the prevention space, but critical is the capacity for us to do the development for the economic evaluations when we start and not add them at the end because adding them at the end doesn't allow us to answer the questions in a sophisticated way. So how do you get involved with Premise? We'd love everyone in the room here to be involved in Premise, Eliza included. We'd love <laughs> everyone in the room to be involved in Premise. We want postdoctoral fellows and PhD scholarships. Um, we want people uh, talking to us about cross-institutional mentorship and seed funding and travel awards. The contact details are there. Um, the other opportunity is through the Youth um, Advisory Board. And we'd like people to subscribe, to follow us on Twitter, to join the conversation. And hopefully, um, Premise can be another vehicle for joining together the fantastic, exciting research of Australia in a collaborative sense. Thank you.
Thank you, Marie. That was a fantastic talk and introduction to Premise. Now I'd like to open the floor for questions. If you have one, please let me know and I'll bring over the microphone. If you're online, you're also able to ask questions and we can filter them through Louise Thornton. Thanks, Bridie. Um, so Marie, you've been in this field for some time now and I guess I'm interested to hear your reflections on, I guess, some of the challenges around the implementation. You know, you've got a great body of evidence-based research and producing more and I guess what do you see and have you seen as the challenges for implementing prevention activities in the Australian context? I'm Mike, don't I? <laughs> yes. Awesome question, Friday. Awesome question. Um, you know, five or ten years ago, it would have been how do, we don't have enough evidence base. Although I have to say, we still are struggling with the evidence base. At least two of those trials are the first trials in the world in young people, substance use and trauma. First trial in the world, young people, substance use and anxiety, so online. So I, I think that while, you know, we have made incredible streaks ahead, we still do have to build um, the evidence base. That said, then getting the evidence base into practice, um, two really big problems. With prevention, you've got to have, you've got to have the future, you've got to have the long game in your mind. And that is a very hard thing to get through with health funding that I think I put it up there, 1.7% of our health budget goes to prevention. So you're really looking for the long game and that is hard to get into policy and practice. But if we can, particularly those long-term follow-ups, that's an opportunity to demonstrate that. So we really are talking about very, very big changes and system changes. The second thing that's really exciting is utilising the fact that our um, adolescents, mine included, live in a digital world. The reach is enormous and you are leveraging that and every every awesome researcher in Australia is leveraging that. That'll be a game changer, but we just have to keep at it and make sure we have the evidence base there. Great question. Okay, I think we might wrap it up. Thank you, Marie, and thank you to all our online viewers.